everybody, Jennifer Fox here with another unboxing video. This time we're unboxing the Five Cent Tarot. This was a Kickstarter. All, it seems like a lot of my decks are Kickstarters. I really enjoy independent artists. I love to see what they do. Um, this was, I think it came up as like one of my suggested back projects. I don't, I didn't like seek it out, but as soon as I saw it, I was really interested in the aesthetic. So. Um, before we get to the cards, let's talk about the things that came with another bag. I really, I don't store a lot of my decks in bags. As you can see, they're all kind of on a shelf in boxes, but I like a good bag. I really do. And this one, you know, I was excited about the deck bag that came with the Modern Witch Tarot, but I think this one's better. It really is. It's got pretty tassels, um, and it has sort of like a velvet or a, like a satin velvet on the outside satin on the inside and it's nice and sturdy really got some heft to it and it does not only does it fit the deck and the cards it fits the box I mean come on that's like that's some serious bag here I also got with it this fun pin I actually haven't even opened the pin yet and plastic crinkles. Sorry. Ah, there we go. That's five cent. I'm not really sure what the deal is with five cents. Um, unless I think it might be a throwback to like the fortune telling machines that you put money in. Five cent tarot. I should probably find out. It wasn't important, so I, I didn't care about it. So I'm going to put this pin over here with my other collection of fun pins. Yep. Um, and a spread cloth. This, I love this spread cloth. It's not so much the design. I mean, the design is cool, but what I really like about it is it's very thin and floaty. It's sort of like a silk scarf instead of a cloth. And, you know, I'm not really big on spreading out cards on cloths. It just doesn't, I just throw them down wherever I am. But this is nice. I really like how smooth it is and how it just sort of, I mean, it's sort of, it's really just sort of like a little, I mean, you can see through it. You can see me through it. And I just love how floaty it is. I feel like I could do like tricks with it. Anyway. This came with a nice sturdy box with a magnetic closure and oh, this side and here it says Madame Clara sees all and it came with also my little five cent little thing my little authenticity sticker this is number 454 of a thousand so first print run exciting the cards themselves ask the cards the cards themselves are a nice light cardstock, which I appreciate. I think I've mentioned before how I have little hands and that the book is stuck. Um, that's my fault. Um, I have little hands and I don't like a fat deck. This deck, I feel like I can, I can get my hand around it and I can't do that with a lot of decks. So um, this was nice. I also like that it has a nice green edge. The whole thing is this sort of muted green color um, and I just I really appreciate that subtlety. Um, the cards themselves also have a very green aesthetic to them. They're very neutral. Um, everything is very, I, I don't wanna say monochromatic cause that's not the case, but they're not shocking. They're very easy on the eyes. They're just nice and um, neutral. I don't know what else to call them. Um, so they're a little thinner. You know, some of the other cards are not quite, still got a nice heft to them. They're not as thin. I would not say they're as thin as the Llewellyn stock. That is some really thin card stock. This is maybe a little closer to US games. Let me, do I have a US games deck around here? I must. Oh yeah, the original Rider Waite. This is, this is a deck I played with like and drew on and did things to it I probably shouldn't have. So, oh, 
yeah, it's thicker than this. It's a little thicker than this. Oh, yeah, I'd say so. Let me put it this way. For as much as a lot of my decks are based on the Rider Waite Smith um, system, I don't really read the original Rider Waite. This is being very contrary. I, I don't really like it. I mean, I like the system, but the original Rider Waite artwork. I know everybody loves Pixie and, and she is amazing and did some amazing work, but I just don't find it very appealing. So, what this deck is a little less Rider Waite and a little more Marseille-like. But I, I want to say, I want to say it's sort of like if you were to take a Marseille deck and a Toth deck because now I don't know much about Alistair Crowley's top deck um, other than I've had my hands on it and I gave it away. But what the top deck had on it was keywords. And this deck, I don't know if you can see that, has keywords. And they also have keywords for reversals. So, for example, this is the Page of Cups. And face up, it's curiosity and possibility and intuition and reversed is immaturity envy and vulnerability so if you were to want to read sort of a I mean I don't know I, I can't really say that it reads like a Marseille at least not in the way that I was taught to read Marseille the way I learned to read Marseille was about showing patterns so a card doesn't have a specific meaning so much as it has a place in a flow. So if I were to see, you know, like a, um, an ace of swords and then followed by an eight of cups, then I would say that you started out, you know, very strong and then you softened up with more vulnerability. That's not how these read. These read with the words and the meanings that you'd see in a top deck, um, but with a Marseille sort of aesthetic. Kind of. There's still, there's still things in here, but I don't have, like, all right, so the Two of Needles would be like the Two of Swords. And if you look at it, that Two of Needles is very much like what you would see with a Marseille deck with Two of Swords, with the shape of the swords. Um, <clears throat> the Three, also very similar to what you'd see in a Marseille deck. They all just sort of read like that, but they have individual meanings. So it's interesting. So I think it takes you away from reading the imagery that you'd get in a Rider Waite Smith deck, but also has the same meanings as a Rider Waite Smith deck. So I think that's really an interesting kind of take on it. And I, I do like it. I like it a lot. Um, also, if you're having a really bad reading, because let's, let's face it, sometimes it happens. You've got somebody and they're just not into it and you're having a hard time reading them and they're being contrary and you know, if it gets that bad, a lot of times I'll just send them on their way and give them their money back. But if they really want a reading and you really want to give a reading to them, those keywords are kind of handy because you can show it to them where it's not so much like um, they might have a little more faith in what you're seeing because the word's right there. I may struggle with it because a lot of times I'm reading decks. I'm much more an intuitive or a psychic reader, so the cards for me are... Um, more like my own psychic vocabulary. So the way I read a certain card may not be how another reads another reader reads that card. So in that case, I may not want a deck like this because I could see someone saying, but that card this says right there that it, it means something else. So something to be aware of. Um, but now let's get to the flip through so you can see all of the cards because they're very pretty and they're really cool. Okay, so here we are with a walkthrough of all of the cards from the Five Cent Tarot. I love that magician. I just really love this spider. Master of Skill is the above is the upright, and the reversed is manipulation, which is actually pretty pretty apt. I also really like how you can see that the right side upwards are all here. And then the reversed words are sort of spread out a little bit, so they're not quite 
um, they're not distracting really from the design because of the way that they're all spaced out there. That's pretty neat. I love the owl as a high priestess. The Hierophant is a praying mantis. How cool is that? I mean, just tying in that whole idea of um, religion and faith with praying through the animal. I think that's wonderful. There's the lovers. The chariot. I think that's a reindeer, actually. I'm not sure what this design is down here. Oh, oh, it's a buggy. There, see? If you take it that way, you can see that there's the wheels and that's a buggy. It's just, it's going that way instead of coming at you. That's interesting. Strength of a snake with the Ouroboros. Um, or a boar, or a, you know, the snake eating its own tail, that deal, um, as our, as our infinity symbol here. I like a seal for the symbol of strength. I like that idea. They're very strong animals, and I really love that, um, that, I just love that sort of idea. What is, oh, we're on an armadillo. Okay, I'm gonna have to look that one up. Anglerfish as the hermit. This Wheel of Fortune is really great with these monkeys all kind of doing their own thing. And there's our snake again. That's very cool. What is this in the corners? I'm not sure what that plan is. That might be thistle. Justice is a crow. There's scales. Of course, the hangman is a bat. You know what I love about this? Look at this beautiful purple color in here. That's just really, that's lovely. Another crow as death with our horse. Still riding a horse sort of in a bicycle. I'm not sure what that's all about. That's kind of, oh, it's a, I think it's a hobby horse, like the little kid's hobby horses. It's a turtle for temperance, beetle for the devil. You know what this car, this deck kind of makes me think of is the, um, what I kind of wanted out of the, uh, oh shoot, what is it called? I'm gonna look. The Spirit Song Tarot. I think I kind of wanted this sort of aesthetic and the Spirit Song is just a little soft, a little too soft for me. The Tower, oh, are this, is it turtles all the way down? It might be. Those might be tortoises. I'm never really good at the difference. Starfish. Oh, look at this moon. Oh, that's beautiful. There's our, um, a crayfish that comes out of the water in the traditional Rider Waite Smith. Sun, we have sunflowers. I'm not sure what, what animal that is on there. It looks like a lizard on a horse. I'm gonna spend some time really looking at these, um, to really get, there's so many things happening for such wide open cards there's so many things happening with our little moths and there's a, a, a pocket watch up here <clears throat> and there's the world a couple more snakes oh this teacup hmm. this deck also came with four additional cards four two three four five oh sorry <laughs> i got reading the tops and forgot that i was there we go. Yes, four additional cards that are not part of the regular um, canon of, of decks. There's actually um, whatever 78 plus four is. It's been a long day. Um, we have the unknown. We've got a nice egg there showing possibility. The beyond. The universe. And the messenger. I really love this one just because it's got a hawk on it. So now we're going to get into the suits. The suits, instead of um, wands, we have matches. Instead of, oh, we still have cups, teacups for cups. That makes sense. Um, I think it was needles for swords. Not kings. Yep, needles for swords. And then uh, pentacles are buttons, which I love. That really kind of plays into that whole aesthetic there. So. Let's go through. Ace. That's a robin. I'm guessing by that, that 
red breast there. Oh. That may be a little mouse. I'm not sure. Look at our three. If we're going to read this card as foresight, I love that. I think it's a housefly. It's got a little, um, like an eye chart there. That's cool. Our four of matches. Look at how we've got honeybees and a home, and we're just setting up. Like this, here's the, the little. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Garland that we see in the the, the four of. Ones in the right away. So that's that's pretty cool. So our five is ants. Um, six. That's an ostrich. Seven. What do you guys think that is in there? I think that's a daddy long legs. I shall have to look that up later. Uh, eight. There's a parrot in our nine of matches. That's very cool. And the ten. It looks like an ant as well. Age. Oh, this knight is cool. He's a knight. Queen. Now, I think, you know, these suits are great if, um, or the court cards are really great if you're still figuring out your court cards. Which, by the way, if you are still figuring out your court cards, I'm just going to throw this out here. Here's a book for you, Your Tarot Cart Court by Ethany. I have yet to finish it, but it's so far from what I've read is really great. Um, king. But see, these have on top, they say, like, our, our king of matches is a born leader. Um, and then we've got vision and intent and success. So I would say that works for our king of wands. Um, let's see, we've got cups. I love that this ace has a spoon. <clears throat> Actually, there's a lot of spoons in here. I've not gone through all these cards yet. So two. Three of cups. Oh, this four of cups is pretty nice. Look at that crab on there. Five. This six is interesting. I'm still read more about these animals. Um, the artist has definitely got information in the book about what each of these animals are and why she chose them. Oh, I've got nine little peacock there, all spread out. A page of cups complete with a little weird fish. <clears throat> Wait. The king. I wonder, are these all water animals? Flamingo. Yeah. Wait, is that? What is that? Yeah, alligator for our page. Alligator, seahorse, flamingo. Look, I know the flamingo is not technically a water animal, but they live in the water, near the water. They eat water animals. Let's just go with it, okay? Um, and then the king. You know, I wonder. I should look back and see if we have anything in common with any of these animals under the different suits to see if that was specific specifically chosen. Everything else in this deck is very specifically chosen, so I wouldn't be surprised. <clears throat> I like this three. The three of swords, or in this case needles, is one of those cards that I look at on just about every deck just to see how it's handled, because it's a difficult card for a lot of people, and um, depending on who I'm reading for and my vibe on their sensitivity level, it'll make a difference in which deck I choose. For that card, I look at that card, I look at um, the death card, because that can be very scary for a lot of people, and also the ten of swords, which some of them can be pretty rough, depending. Nine. Oh, wait till you see this ten of needles. What a great choice of porcupine. That is, that is wonderful. I really like that. Let's see. Here's our page. All right, so I think my theory about the different whether they chose she chose water animals for cups. I think I just blew it away here with the king of needles because <clears throat> they're both water animals. So maybe there's more information in the book about that. And our buttons. How cool is that octopus? He's pretty groovy. I like too that the sea is very 
tumultuous like you would want to see in someone trying to keep their balance. Um, I like that five. That's really great. You see what I mean about how the, the coins, excuse me, buttons are sort of set up like you would see in a Marseille deck. Oh, I wonder what bird that is in our nine. It looks a little hawkish, but I'm not sure if that's an actual hawk. Again. Page. Interesting description for our page of, of buttons, a dream endeavor. Huh. That's interesting. Uh, kangaroo. That's awesome. And I believe that's a scarab beetle for our king. Very cool. Really like this deck. I love that everything is so um, aesthetically pleasing. Very just um, cool and calming, but still has a lot of information in, in here. I think that's I think I would. Uh, I'm going to be using this deck a lot. I really like that. Excellent, excellent job, Madam Clara. Well, friends, one of the things I forgot to do at the beginning before I did the flip through was to show you the book. It's a cute little book, um, you know, very lightweight. It has in it um, some helpful bits because there's a couple cards that I thought the focus was something else, um, mostly in the majors. There was um, the lover's card. To me, the lover's card looked like it was all about the moth, which didn't really make sense when you consider that the lover's card is, you would imagine it having two things, not just one thing, but it's really about the snakes. So if you were to look in the book, you would see that the moth represents the angel and the snakes is the lovers. So um, if you're finding a card confusing in here, this book is really helpful. And also for some of the, some of the animals um, that may not be is immediately obvious. Let's see if I can find an example. The king of needles is a swordfish. That's pretty obvious. Um, rabbits, octopus. The three of buttons is hyenas. That might be a little trickier if you're not up on your, is it canids? Dog-like animals. Anyway, the book is very handy for that. Um, it also has some bits about what the artist considered each animal to represent. So in that way, it's, it's pretty groovy. So let me know what you think about the five cent tarot in the comments. If you have this deck, um, a link to where you can buy this deck Pretty sure it's available on her Etsy store. Right now, Madam Clara has that on her Etsy store. Um, I'll put a link in there so that you can, you know, check it out for yourself. Um, in the meantime, don't forget to click that subscribe button and I will see you around. Thank you.